Good morning. Welcome to worship at First English Lutheran Church in Appleton, Wisconsin. We are glad to have you uh, in worship in person, and we also welcome those who uh, may be watching online. But welcome in the name of Jesus to our worship services this morning. My name is Pastor Gary Nagelberg. I'm a retired ELCA pastor and member of this congregation and helping out uh, during the transition uh, among the pastors. But uh, good to be with you. It's been two years since I've done this, so um, hope hopefully uh, you will be forgiving if there's any missteps up here. But uh, we also want to thank uh, Lou Chiquette for uh, being a worship assistant this morning and Maestro Eric uh, at the keyboard up in the balcony. So thanks to them for uh, helping us with our worship service this morning. We continue with uh, some announcements and we want to say a thank you to uh, Chelsea and to Sadie Bauer for sharing those announcements with us this morning. Good morning, I'm Chelsea Bauer, and this is Pastor Mary's granddaughter, Sadie, and we are here to deliver today's announcements. Today we celebrate Reconciling in Christ Sunday with a theme made in God's image, God's boundless di diversity. We at First English are invited into a time of service and action, pledging ourselves to be advocates for our LGBTQIA plus siblings, as well as all siblings of God's diverse kingdom. In understanding the ways in which we are all made in God's image, how can we learn to care and advocate for one another so we can best see God's boundless diversity of creation? You can learn more about reconciling in Christ at First English on our website. In recognition of Black History Month, the choirs at the downtown site will be performing a spiritual every Sunday during the worship services in February to celebrate the rich cultural heritage, triumphs, and adversities that are an indelible part of our country's history. First English welcomes new choir members at any time. Contact Eric, Director of Congregational Worship and Music in the church office for more information. A week from today is the third annual celebration of mission at 11.45 a.m. at the Downtown Site Sanctuary or online via Zoom. Share the joys and victories of 2021, plans for 2022, vote on new council members and the 2022 operating budget. Absentee ballots for the council election are available in the church office. No need to pre-register if attending in person, but to attend the Zoom meeting, please sign up on the church website. More information can be found on our website or in our announcements about all the activities happening at First English. Have a great day! First English Lutheran Church is a community of faith seeking to join God in courageously loving the world, treasuring all people as we are, welcoming all who are yearning for a safe place filled with God's love, compassion, and grace. You are loved, welcomed, and wanted here. Created in God's image, more alike than different. Together and individually, we are all children of God. All belonging within God's embrace. Believing in God's abundance and the breath of God's unconditional love. We joyfully challenge any sense of scarcity, inadequacy, or human distinctions dividing us. You are loved, welcomed, and wanted here. Whatever the shade of your skin, or ethnicity, or place of birth, whatever your employment status, whether you are strapped financially or needn't worry about money, whether you have a significant other who you share your life, whether you are divorced, widowed, single, whomever you love, whatever your gender identity, sexual orientation, or gender expression, you, you are, are loved, loved well welcomed, welcomed, and wanted here. Whether you are straight or gay, lesbian or bisexual, transgender, or still wondering who it is God has created you to be. Whether you are abled, differently abled, be it in body or mind, whatever made you feel yourself to be. Whether your faith is new and strong, shaky or non-existent. Whether your heart yearns for or celebrates hope. You are loved, welcomed, and wanted here. You are loved, welcomed, and wanted here. You are loved, welcomed, and wanted here. You are loved, welcomed, and wanted here.
Will you please stand? In the Spirit's embrace, you are loved, welcomed, and wanted here. We are loved, welcomed, and wanted here. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Continue with the prayer of the day. God of restoration, you have the power to heal and to renew. 
Mend all that is broken in us and in our world, and bring us to wholeness for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. The Gospel reading for today is uh, from the fourth chapter of uh, John's Gospel and continues into the fifth chapter. Um, it is a continuation of, uh, of our Gospel readings, and you may be seated. It is a rather long reading, and so we, we don't want you to get too tired standing as you listen. But uh, we uh, want to remind you that uh, we are on a journey with Jesus, and uh, today we are meeting some people along the way who are in need of healing. Uh, the second healing story that you will hear today is uh, the basis for today's sermon. Um, I will be the narrator, and uh, Lou is going to take the part of Jesus. The Holy Gospel according to John, the fourth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Then Jesus came again to Cana in Galilee, where he had changed the water into wine. Now there was a royal official whose son lay ill in Capernaum. When he heard that Jesus had come from Judea to Galilee, he went and begged him to come down and heal his son, for he was at the point of death. Then Jesus said to him, Unless you see signs and wonders, you will not believe. The official said to him, Sir, come down before my little boy dies. Jesus said to him, Go, your son will live. The man believed the word that Jesus spoke to him and started on his way. As he was going down, his slaves met him and told him that his child was alive. So he asked them the hour when he began to recover, and they said to him, The father realized that this was the hour when Jesus had said to him, Your son will live. So he himself believed along with his whole household. Now this was the second sign that Jesus did after the coming from Judea to Galilee. After this, there was a festival of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now in Jerusalem by the Sheep Gate, there is a pool called in Hebrew Bethsatha, which has five porticos. In these lay many invalids, blind, lame, and paralyzed. One man was there who had been ill for 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there, he knew that he had been there a long time. He said to him, Do you want to be made well? The sick man answered him, Jesus said to him, Stand up, take your mat, and walk. At once the man was made well, and he took up his mat and began to walk. Now that day was a Sabbath. So the Jews said to the man who had been cured, But he answered them, They asked him, Now the man who had been healed did not know who it was, for Jesus had disappeared into the crowd that was there. Later, Jesus found him in the temple and said to him, See, you have been made well. Do not sin anymore, so that nothing worse happens to you. The man went away and told the Jews that it was Jesus who had made him well. Therefore, the Jews started persecuting Jesus because he was doing such things on the Sabbath. But Jesus answered them, My father is still working, and I also am working. For this reason, 
the Jews were seeking all the more to kill him because he was not only breaking the Sabbath, but he was also calling God his own father, thereby making himself equal to God. The Gospel of the Lord. This time we'll call on Kristen for the children's time. Good morning, friends. Good morning. So let's see here. I have a question for you. Who knows who this is? Yeah. Tinkerbell. Absolutely. Tinkerbell. And so I have a question. You know, I don't know. I'm not a doctor. But um, how, how do you think Tinkerbell's looking right now? Do you think she looks real healthy? No, right? No, in fact, do you know the story of Tinkerbell, why she looks sick, why she's sick? Does anybody know? She drinks poison that actually Peter Pan was supposed to drink, but she, she drinks it instead. Now, when she's this sick, does anybody remember what she says that will help her heal? What is it that she needs to do? We need to clap, right? Clap. So if you guys want Tinkerbell to get better, clap for me. Clap, clap, friends, clap louder, 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 louder. Oh, that's right. You did it. Now, what do you think was magic? Do you think it was the clapping or do you think that it's because you believed, you believed she could get better? You believed that if you did what you could do in that moment, that something amazing could happen. Well, we have the third one here. What do you think would happen if we said during that same moment, um, listen, Tinkerbell, no. Listen, I'm sorry. Yes, you seem like you're in a bad way, but it's Sunday. Uh, we just can't help you out. I hope you make it till tomorrow. But the truth of the matter is, on Sundays, we just don't help. It's our day off. We don't do it. How do you think things would look for Tinkerbell then? Bad! You're right! Thank you. Yeah, things would look bad for Tinkerbell then. Um, you know, for sure, there wouldn't be much hope if that's the case. So we have two stories today, and you heard about them in the gospel. One is the story of an official son. And the official son, um, it would have been very unusual for an official to come up to this wandering rabbi, Jesus, and say, I believe I believe that you can do something to help my son. And just like when we clapped because we believed, Jesus was able to do something amazing in that moment. And we have the story of um, the man in Bethesda at the well. And in that moment, it would have been like the Pharisees and it would have been like the Jews saying, I'm sorry. You know, I mean, I'm sure I could help you out. But listen, it's against the rules. I can't help you. It's against the rules. We see that Jesus actually reaches into those moments and says, it's not about the rules. It's about love. And in that love, amazing things happen. But you got to believe. You got to be willing to clap. So, what we find in this moment is that when you believe, when you say, it's possible, when you say, I'm arriving right now to be part of God's work, that you can clap and amazing things will happen. Not because of what we did, but, we, but because of what we believe Jesus could do. Have a wonderful, wonderful day, friends.
And I hope you find many opportunities to clap. Please stand as together we continue with the offertory prayer. We bring these gifts before you, healing Lord, with gratitude for the abundant blessings you have bestowed upon your people. Use these gifts to bring healing to the world and uplift all to wellness, justice, and equity. Amen. This time we invite you to find your uh, little uh, cups of wine and uh, also the bread that is uh, attached to the top of it. We want to remind you that uh, we will commune together following the praying of the Lord's Prayer. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right 
and our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. By the leading of a star, he was shown forth to all the nations. In the waters of the Jordan, you proclaimed him your beloved Son. In the miracle of water turned to wine, he revealed your glory. And so with all the choirs of angels, and with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. We invite you to take your communion elements at this time, and together we will commune. Please tear off the cellophane from the top of the cup, there you will find the bread, the body of Christ given for you. Peel back the foil on your cup. The blood of Christ shed for you. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pause for a moment to think about this great gift which we have just received, the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, to think and to meditate and to give thanks. Will you please stand for the sharing of the peace? The peace of the Lord be with you always. We invite you to share the peace in any kind of sign you would like to make to your neighbor, the peace of Jesus. Please be seated. The blessings of Almighty God be with all of you as we gather around his word this morning. Amen.
You have heard two healing stories in today's gospel reading. The second of which is the one I'd like to talk to you a bit about. Because it's about a man who has been ill for 38 years. Can you imagine 38 years being ill? If we were to count backwards, that would bring us back to the year 1984. What were you doing in 1984? I don't even remember. This man had been sick for that many years. He had been waiting to be released from his ailment all of that time. He's a desperate man in some ways. He's resting beside this pool, which is called Bethsetha. It's located in northeast Jerusalem. It's not all that big. The surface area of that pool probably would be about the same size as the footprint of your house at home. But it's very, very deep. He's been waiting by that pool all of this time, waiting for the waters to be stirred up. Now, this pool is not like a swimming pool. It's more like a big cistern to collect water precious rainwater that would run off the buildings and the streets so that the people might have the water that they needed in this very arid land. And so whenever the rains would come, the waters would be stirred up <coughs> and they would start to fill up that cistern, that very deep cistern. Man's been waiting for 38 years beside that pool. We mustn't make the mistake of thinking that this Bethsatha pool is like a swimming pool where you can just bend down and put your hand or your feet into the water. <coughs> it's a very deep cistern, probably 20 or 30 feet deep. And it doesn't mean that the pool would fill up to the very top, but this man would be by that pool waiting for someone to help him down the very sharp-edged edges of that pool. Local lore said that when the water is stirred up, when it would rain and the water would start to fill that cistern, the first one into the pool would be healed of whatever disease or ailment that he or she had. But the man doesn't move fast enough. Evidently, he can't move fast enough. And someone else always manages to get into the pool, into the stirred up waters first, and so the man has to wait for the next time. And he waits. And he waits. There lies the so-called healing water. So enticing, but out of reach. The water could just as well be a mirage because this man remains unhealed. It's as though the stirred waters mock the waiting man. So close, yet so far. Desperate people will give in to desperate measures, even if they've been waiting for 38 years. And so the man in today's gospel reading puts faith in the periodic stirring up of these waters of the pool, but it doesn't do him any good. That ill-founded faith, drives him to inactivity. And so he finds himself there at the pool's edge every day. And he waits. And he waits. And nothing happens. What is this man really waiting for? After all, no one can really know what he's been through all of those 38 years, and no one can tell him what his life would be like if he could get into the water before the others. He lives a kind of anonymous life. He doesn't know what the future would be like if he were healed. He doesn't know what those days would be like, a life unknowable. So the man is waiting for something that has nothing definite about it. Life beyond this pool is just a big question mark. As, you, as long as you and I wait for something that's definite, we can manage. 
It's much more difficult to wait for something that you don't know you're waiting for. We can cope if we know that we are waiting for something that we can know, something that's tangible, something that we've experienced in the past, perhaps, and want to experience again. We can cope with waiting for vacations to come or for a work project to be completed. We can wait for our allergies to clear up. We can even be patient for a new baby to arrive, as exciting as that can be. As long as we wait for something definite, we can handle it because we know something is coming. But the man by the pool... He doesn't know what he's waiting for. He's waiting for a great big X, a big unknown. He's captured by a question mark. How like that man by the water are we? When we ask questions like, what will we eat? Or what will we drink? Or what will we wear? Questions that Jesus asked these things can occupy those dark spaces in our lives when we become anxious and where fears start to creep in. What will happen to the stock market? What's going on with my health? I don't feel so good today. Am I being a good parent for my children? Why do I feel so insecure about my job? Do I have enough for retirement? What's going on in Ukraine? How am I going to finish that gigantic school project? We have all of these anxious thoughts about today and thoughts about tomorrow. And those anxious thoughts can come in the middle of the night and they threaten us. Like the man in today's text, we might be tempted to put our trust in some kind of other stirred up waters, which promises a quick fix to our anxious cares. We might be tempted to look around for any kind of handy guru who seems to be promising something special for us if we would only dip into his or her own watery concoction of a hyped-up solution. That's a temptation, isn't it? It puts us into some the same kind of predicament of the man by the pool who was there for... 38 years. But now Jesus comes. And now Jesus enters the picture. And now Jesus enters the life of this man who's been sick for so long. There's no rational arguments from Jesus about the man's condition. He doesn't tell him what's going on in minute detail. Jesus doesn't hold his hand. Jesus doesn't have some syrupy sympathy. There's no self-help lecture from Jesus. There's no encouragement to the man to, you know, buck up and pull yourself up by your own bootstraps. No, there's none of that coming from Jesus. Because you see, none of those things are very helpful in times of anxiety, times of sickness in times of need, in times of fear. Instead, Jesus does something remarkable. He commands the man to take up his mat and walk. He tells the man to take up his mat and walk away from the place he's been for 38 years. He commands the man to walk away from those waters that promise much but deliver nothing. Stand up, says Jesus, and walk. Go. Walk. And the man does. Christ's words do it all. It's like a lamp to the man's feet, showing him the way past his fears past what he's been dealing with for all that time. Where once there was an unknown, Jesus gives the man a future, a future 
to walk into. And this is how Christ deals with you and me too. He doesn't give you up when you persist in trusting something or someone other than God. We all do that, even though we know better. Jesus doesn't pitch us deeper into our wrong, trusting by lashing out at us or rejecting us or refusing us. No, he doesn't do that. Nor does Christ turn away and ignore you. No, he lets us know something completely different. He comes to find us resting by whatever pool of water making the latest false promises. And he says to us, why are you here? Why are you here? You don't belong here where false promises are made. Your life has been dearly purchased by me, says Jesus, upon my cross. And it towers above any fears that you might have. And it conquers any doubts you may have. Because you have a future. You don't live into an unknown. You have a future. And doesn't this word of love break through our fears? Doesn't this promise of belonging to Christ put our hearts to rest? And by reminding us to whom we belong, doesn't Christ keep us from straying to others and knowing and hearing when we know and hear those false promises? And isn't this exactly what we need in those moments of deepest despair? You have a future, and that future is with God. So, my sisters and brothers, get up, take your mat, and walk into that future with confidence. Amen. Will you please stand for the Apostles' Creed? God has made us his people through our baptism into Christ, living together in trust and hope we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. At this time in our service, we will be giving a, a litany of thanksgiving and also dedicating these quilts for use, these quilts who have been made by the people of First English Lutheran Church. As we do so, we invite you to find a quilt that's nearby you, put your hand upon it, and join me as we give this litany of thanksgiving to God. In the name of our Lord, Creator, Savior, and Spirit, who calls us to do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with our God. Amen. To you we lift our voices in praise and thanksgiving for the many blessings you have given us. To you we renew our Christian promise to help those in need, to feed the hungry, shelter the homeless, clothe the naked, comfort the weary and outcast. Welcome the stranger and be a loving neighbor to all the people of the earth. We thank you for the loving service that these quilts represent. To you be all glory and honor now and forever through Jesus Christ. Amen. We continue with the prayers of the church. We pray for the church, 
the world, and all those in need. Grateful for your everlasting faithfulness, we lift our hearts and prayers to you, merciful God, in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. We come before you now lifting up our brothers and sisters who are named on the prayer list in our bulletin, those serving in the military, living their call overseas, and in need of your healing, peace, and wholeness. Provide your loving care to those whom we now name out loud or in the silence of our hearts. We offer prayers of comfort and healing for the families and friends of Lee Wheatrich and Helen Yedis. Bless those who mourn, eternal God, with the comfort of your love that they may face each new day with hope. May their memories become joyful, their days enriched with friendship, and their lives encircled by your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving Father, we ask you to help us become better allies. Guide those who are learning more about their sexual orientation, gender identity, or expression, those who have been victims of hate, those who have not been accepted, and those who are not able to be open about who they are. Teach us how to be better advocates for our black, brown, indigenous, people of color siblings, and help them to be treated equally as they should have been from the start. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of compassion, we pray for relief from pain, recovery from illnesses and surgery, cancer treatment, death of loved ones, and a renewed connection with God. We place those who are ill under your care and humbly ask that you restore your servants to health again. Above all, grant us the grace to acknowledge your will and know that whatever you do, you do for the love of us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, children from the kids' cabin time and juice box hour ask for prayers for cabin time families to get better from COVID. They offer prayers of thanksgiving for fun during cheerleading and plays and pray that Bear and Titan have a good vacation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Grateful for your everlasting faithfulness, we lift our hearts and our prayers to you, merciful God, in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Receive the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.
Thanks be to God.